Hello and welcome back to Beckler Guitars and Repair. Today we're checking out a 2010 Gibson Les Paul Jr. in satin white. Let's take a look. <laughs> So I picked up this guitar locally and I really kind of missed the last junior that I played so I was kind of looking for another one especially since there's kind of rumors that Gibson is not going to be releasing any more juniors and the only way you're going to be able to get them is the custom shop so I don't know if that's true but I wanted to get one before they're really hard to get so and this one's in a really cool satin white finish, which is quite cool. So this is the 2010 Gibson Les Paul Jr. And uh, yeah, so the finish, the finish is kind of rare. They didn't make too many of these ones. And uh, it's a satin finish, so it's not a gloss, so it's a lot thinner than a normal finish. And a lot of people swear by these, you know, super thin finishes. It lets the guitar breathe and it's got better resonance and sustain. Now, I don't know if that holds any water or not, but I do like this finish. Uh, being so thin though, you do see every little mark on it, but that's kind of cool because it, it'll relic really nicely. You'll see every little mark and ding and eventually it's going to look like a really old weathered kind of patina beat up guitar. And I have, no, I, I have no issues with that. I like my guitars to look played. I don't... Uh, Keep them on the wall and never touch them. So that's no, no issue to me. Uh, this guitar has a couple nice features on it that not a lot of Les Paul Juniors get. So one of them is the ebony fingerboard. So Gibson USA doesn't put ebony fingerboards on many things. Usually it's reserved for the custom shop stuff. You can kind of see ebony fingerboards sometimes on certain special runs or models. Uh, SG specials tend to have a little ebony fingerboard sometimes. And uh, I think this year they were putting the ebony fingerboards on certain finishes and not on other ones. So uh, the ebony fingerboard really matches this satin white finish quite nicely. Another thing is, is this bridge saddle bar. So this is a stop bar. What's cool about this one though, it, this one's called a lightning bar. So it actually has grooves machined into the top to kind of help with intonation. So that's kind of neat. And uh, you can also adjust these screws on the back to further help with intonation if you need to pull the bridge or saddle further back or further forward. This also comes with a Gibson Dog Ear P90 pickup. One volume, one tone with thumb bleeders. That's the name of these little pieces of metal that stick out in the front of the knobs just to show you what number that you're on. And uh, a standard black pick guard with acrylic pearl inlays. And our headstock is just a silk screen. Let's have a quick look at the back. So there is our control cavity. And another look at our satin white finish. So yeah, these white finishes just tend to yellow over the years and this one is just starting to yellow a little bit in certain spots. And uh, it'll age differently in different spots just depending on how much light is hitting it. If it's sitting in a windowsill and the neck's getting light or the body, you'll have parts of it that are more yellow than others. So you can see a little bit more yelling, yellowing in a few certain spots, but for the most part it's pretty uniformly yellow. It's starting to check a little bit in a few spots. You can see that here in the neck. And checking is just the small little lines in the finish. What you see on a lot of older Gibsons and on white Gibsons. For whatever reason, the white finishes and metallic finishes tend to check a lot easier than some of the other ones. And then here's a look at our headstock. We can see that our serial number dates it to a 2010 
321st day of the year. All right, let's uh, take it apart and get some measurements and some specs. Weighing in at seven pounds, 12.2 ounces. And our dog ear P90 pickup is reading a 7.71. Width at the nut is a 1.69. And at the 12th fret, a 2.06. Neck depth at the first fret is a 0.823. And at the 12th fret, a 0.88. Here's a look at our dog ear P90 pickup from Gibson. So yeah, that looks as it should. A lot of these uh, 2000 dog ear P90s didn't have any writing or stickers on them, but uh, you can tell because of how the uh, solder is in that location with the braided wiring and the um, silver screws along with the golden other screws and the gold black plate. And here's a look at our route. It looks pretty good. There's some fuzzy in there. So that's that happens from a dull router bit. And uh, you see that from this era of Gibson as well. So that's pretty standard. And here's a look at our lightning bar tailpiece. Yeah, these are pretty cool. Um, they're kind of hollowed out so they're lightweight. You see that there's all those chambers in the back. And then uh, it's got the lightning bar pattern at the top. So this is just compensation. Um, so the strings sit on each individual line and they're either further forward or backwards to help with the intonation. And then you've also got your two screws in the back to uh, help with that as well. And uh, it's called a lightning bar because this kind of looks like a lightning bolt. Here's a look at our uh, cavity route here. So it's a nice route. Again, some fuzzies and in there as well from the dull router, router bit. We see uh, two Gibson branded pots in there and it looks like factory wiring except for this capacitor. So it looks like someone has swapped the capacitor on here with some sort of Russian capacitor. Uh, I noticed a couple other things that are in stock on this guitar because I had a look on the website to see if I could figure out what that capacitor is. But uh, this guitar never came with these knobs. So these top hat reflector knobs were added along with the thumb bleeders because those weren't stock. And then the only other thing that's not stock is the truss cover. So the original junior truss covers had a little truss cover that said junior on it. So someone had swapped this with a more traditional one. But uh, yeah, I'm interested to hear uh, if I can hear a difference because of that capacitor or not. All right, so I found a little bit more about the capacitor. It's definitely been replaced. So this is a zero point or a point zero one five Soviet era capacitor. So people use these as a bumblebee alternative and they're still pretty pricey. This one's selling for about $18 Canadian with $50 shipping. So I'm sure I could find a cheaper one, but uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how that sounds. Here's a look at our headstock. Headstock's in nice condition, no scratches or dings and uh, maybe some very slight surface level scuffs on there and our truss rods in really good shape lots of room for adjustment and this is our Corian nut and it looks like it's quite well cut and there's a look at our really nice dark ebony fingerboard and our frets which are also in very nice condition no divots or oxidation looks quite nice they do, however, they could stand a, a bit of a polishing. So I'm going to go ahead and polish these frets and uh, clean the fingerboard. So let's have a look how that looks. And here's how it looks with the frets all buffed and the fingerboard nice and clean. So yeah, no fret wear is visible on the frets anymore. And they're super shiny and polished and the ebony is nice and clean. As far as condition goes on this guitar, <clears throat> We've got a couple little scrapes and dings throughout. This finish is very, very thin, so any sort of mark, you're going to see it. So yeah, just here and there, there's a little bit of wear through the finish here on the, on the edge. A couple little dimples here, here. 
on the horn there's a little bit and a little bit of wear there and a couple more so just kind of little small things throughout but nothing, no big gouges or scratches or anything like that and this guitar is going to relic really nicely as well I did notice one little impression on the neck here it's just barely noticeable through feel but you can see that there is a little impression there so I'm not really sure what that's from but uh, yeah okay let's go ahead and see what kind of a setup we can get on this guitar I managed to get a very nice setup on this Les Paul Jr. so you can see that there's just a tiny bit of relief in the neck um, so that small gap between the notch straight edge and the fingerboard so that shows that the test rod's pretty nice and straight and uh, this is our cowboy cord area so when I use the third fret you can see that the string is just resting very nicely against that first fret so that tells us that the truss rod is nice and tight but also that this nut is cut very nicely so we've got nice action up here and then at the 12th fret we can see at the low E we've got an action of 1.5 millimeters and at the high E And at the high E, that is just about a one millimeter or maybe even a little bit lower. So, yeah, nice low action. Uh, I like to speed up this part, but if you want to listen to it in real time, you can play back at 0.25 or 25% playback speed. So yeah, nice slow action with no buzzing or fretting out anywhere. And uh, I could honestly probably get it a little bit lower if I wanted to because there is no hint of buzz even. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see how it sounds. All right, here I am plugged into the One Chew King Rig. All right, I let that go on for way too long. Um, so basically, we're just gonna run through the tones here. There's not much to go through. There's just one pickup, one volume, one tone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do clean and then do a little bit dirty. And uh, just to note, I'm using a Shure 57 to uh, mic my amplifier. So let's get started.
it sounds great, clean. This one has a little bit more spank than I'm used to with the P90 dog gear. I wonder if that has to do with that capacitor at all or not. Um, but yeah, this one in particular has uh, quite a bit of uh, treble spank to it. Um, it's also really versatile with the tone, as you could hear. Um, turning it down halfway makes a big difference. Turning it down all the way makes a huge difference. So you can really dial in your tone just with the tone knob. So that's cool. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and try it in with a little bit of dirt.
All right, final thoughts on the Gibson 2010 Les Paul Jr. in satin white. Well, I miss my other Les Paul Jr. a little bit less because I think I like this one even more. Um, I just, I really like the finish. The white looks great. Uh, the satin finish is cool. It's going to age really, really cool. It's going to check in yellow and... Uh, the super thin finish apparently lets it breathe a little bit more for resonance and sustain. I, I don't know about all that, but it does sound really good. This guitar actually had a little bit different sound than I'm used to. Uh, usually on the Les Paul Juniors, they can sound a little bit dark sometimes, a little bit too mid-driven for my taste. I like something with a little bit more treble sometimes. Or uh, the ability to have that. And this thing actually did sound like it did have a little bit more highs than a normal dog ear pure 90 that I'm used to. I don't know if it's that Russian capacitor in the back or what, but I was able to get a lot more highs out of this. Um, and then if it's too shrill for you, you can always have the option to roll down that tone. So when I rolled down that tone, you could hear it sound a little bit more like a traditional P90. So that's pretty cool to have that uh, option on this guitar. So you can get a little, quite a bit of versatility out of just the tone knob on a Les Paul Jr., which is cool. You can really shape the tone but with just one little knob. I still think there is something to this one pickup thing. People say it's less magnetic pull in the strings, so you get better tone, stuff like that. I don't know what it is, um, what the secret sauce about it is, but I every time I do play a Les Paul Jr. or something with one pickup, it just I really gravitate towards it and I really like the tone. So yeah, this guitar played great, it looks great, it stayed in tune very well. Uh, I really like the ebony fingerboard, super dark, and uh, they're just really f nice to play on. They feel super smooth, and um, this one's actually quite thick. Look, look, at the, look at the thickness of that ebony. It's, it's quite thick. Yeah, other than that, it's a super simple guitar, but um, sounds great. It's kind of a rock and roll machine. It's pretty light as well. And this one came with a, a decent hard shell case, which is nice. I think this is in this year, they usually only came with a bag. So yeah, pretty happy with it. Okay, well, that's going to be it for today. Thanks for tuning in for Beckler Guitars and Repair. And I'm going to have more for you really soon. Thanks a lot.